recording on. And sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna just, I'm gonna share my screen. So be, you know, before we officially get started today, um, you know, here's the article in the Athletic. And since I have a New York Times subscription, I can access articles, but I don't think that I can share them from the Athletic. Um, but basically, um, his coach um, and let's see. Uh, now I can't find. Oh, because his his coach is from Brazil, named uh, Fernando Pereira, and basically, what he's what, instead of the the typical method of learning different moves in basketball, which is you just practice that move over and over again. When you're in a game, you have to exercise whatever it is that you're trying to do with people trying to distract you. So. So that's the practices that he has is that he's having Rudy Gobert not just do the moves, but he's doing the moves while he's being distracted doing something else. So one example is um, he has to dribble. And at the same time, he's dribbling with one hand. He's batting a balloon into the air with the other hand. So he's got to pay attention to where the balloon is and also keep an eye um, on the ball that he's dribbling. And so um they put together a video um of some of these drills there's no sound in the video but the the key thing you know the but but you'll be able to see these these drills which is kind of much more like a real life situation and that's the whole basis of of uda is that you know is you're in the middle of doing something and you're observing what happens you figure out what you can do well um and you react to the situation and then you decide what you're going to do and then you have to you have to do whatever whatever the action is but at the same time that you're doing the action you still have to observe the environment and you have to react to the environment and you have to do that all at once and it has to be subconscious so uh let me see if i can ah, how do you oh here it is okay so here it is on full screen so in this first drill, um, what he has to do is he has to shoot the ball, but first he has to hit the ball, the other ball in the air. So he turns around, has to hit the other ball in the air, and then he has to, um, and then he has to take take the shot. So that's kind of the first drill, and then I'll go through the second drill, also. That he well, it's not that long a video. Let me just. Uh, Okay, so he's he's still, I guess he's still doing this one, and he and he actually misses one. Let me advance. Okay, so in this one, he's he's dribbling two balls, and he has to do you know he has to react to the to to kicking the ball that's coming to him, but also sometimes instead of kicking the ball, they'll pass him a ball, and he has to pass um, one of his balls to the other person to the coach see this you'll see that coming up in a second so this time he's kicking again come on okay and he's getting ready come on pass him the ball so there he's passing him the ball and then he's going to start kicking the ball again so he's being distracted while he while, while he's trying to work and then i think there's one other drill that he's showing here oh and in this drill He's balancing on something with his left leg at the same time that he's trying to catch something. And so he has to be, you know, monitoring what he's doing with his with his leg. And that's much more akin to when you're, you know, you're, you're playing in a real game situation where you're having to react to other players moving, players trying to, to, to block you, um, uh, players trying to get in your way at the same time that you're trying to execute your pass or your block or whatever it is that you're trying to do. So I thought this is this was really when as I was reading the article on it that this was really like the 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 absolute perfect example of using UDA um, to train yourself to be able to rapidly observe, rapidly orient, and decide what to do. Um, decide and then while you're executing still going through that OODA loop so um so you know maybe you'll be able to maybe you'll be able to access the athletic and and take a look at that article also 
if 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 you're interested, I'm gonna put it into the chat my link and i don't know if you're going to be able to access it um and john what was the quote that you saw by Pedera? uh the quote was along the lines of saying um he was comparing other players like there's a really good center called Jokic, right and he was like he doesn't jump he doesn't run but he's really good at making decisions. And he was talking about how it's going to be a brain-based game going forward, mm -hmm. about how it's about quick decisions rather than who's the strongest. Yeah, yeah, right. okay, great quote, yes. So um, anyhow, so when I see examples of, of, you know, some of the things in the class, I get really excited. So I was I was pretty excited about that. Um, so let's uh, switch off to the whole purpose of today. The purpose of today is to give, you all a chance to you know to talk about you know how you would train others in some of these techniques and the lessons that that you created and um and theoretically i've given everybody the right to share your screen but if you want to i can pull the lessons up and i can share them and you can just tell me when to advance or when to scroll down so um so who wants to get it over with? Who wants to go first and be, you know, like really excited, exciting? Obviously, I can't share while I'm driving, but I can talk while I'm driving. If you want to pull mine up, I can walk through it. Um, you know something? I'm going to reserve you. Wait. Yeah, I'm going to reserve okay. you for when you're 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 back because I, I I really I don't want to like distract from your driving. <laughs> You know, um, okay, I would no feel worries. absolutely horrible if something happened. So, uh, um, okay, no worries. Okay. So, I but thank you. a little you. bit longer. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so I'm going to, so S Stephanie. I'm, I'm happy oh, to go if oh, nobody great. else wants to go that's, first. That, that's great. Okay. Um, yes, Heidi. So, do you want to show or do you want me to? I think, give screen. me a second. I think I can show. I'm one of those people that has about 175 tabs open, though. So just give me a second to get to the right place. Okay. Heidi, you're my people. I just have to say that. <laughs> yeah. People are like, I don't know how you do that. And I was like, I don't know how people's brains function if they don't have everything they're working on open. At the I was... I was thinking the same thing. People give me crap all the time because I have so many tabs open, but that's my functionality. Yep, that's the way that's the way my brain works. So okay. Well, I rarely have more than 30 tabs, so um, can you guys see? Perfect. It's it's loading actually. Okay, I was like, it's still loading on my screen, okay. so if you guys can see it. Awesome. <laughs> we, yeah, got it, got it. Um, <clears throat> so as a grade one teacher, I opened, uh, I did it with Kelsey's Choices, which I referenced, I think, several times throughout this training. Mm -hmm. I'm just, oh, this reminds me so much of this. Um, and essentially, Kelsey's Choices, for those of you that are not familiar with it, it it's problem solving, solving strategies for young students, right? So it's, mm -hmm. and I'll kind of go through that a little bit. So this PowerPoint would honestly probably be about, oh, I can turn my video on too. I don't know if that's helpful or not. Maybe I can't now that I'm screen sharing. Anyway, um, this would probably be about 10 lessons that I might do with younger kids, maybe wow. one or two. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Just because you really need to break it down for them as you're explaining every strategy. So I'll kind of go through this. Um, so try to do this. Here are the four steps that help you make the best choice and put in the OODA loops language that's with this, like observe what the problem is, pause and orient, decide what strategy you're going to use first, and then act. Mm -hmm. um, and then Kelso's choice is big on identifying if it's a big problem or a small problem. So this this would all be probably one lesson that I would do with the kids. Again, keeping in mind that kids at this age, I mean, 15 to 20 minutes on the carpet of talking through and getting ideas on this, like that's maximum amount of time. Yeah. Um, so a big problem is something that's probably unsafe. You cannot solve this problem on your own. 
These are all ideas from students in my classroom. You see a fire, somebody brings a knife to school. There's a baby in the oven was a particularly creative mm. one from a student. Um, but then at the bottom, like, can you think of some more? So getting student voice in that to tell us what are some big problems that they wouldn't be able to solve on their own. Um, and this is all part of the pause phase um, or the orient of OODA loops. A small problem is someone takes your place in line, someone won't share a yellow crayon with you, cheating in a game at recess, et cetera. And again, the opportunity for students to give more. And they're always so excited to share their feedback on things like this of what small problems are. Um, and then you can open it up like they love acting these things out, too. So then they get to act out what the like doing a problem. Everybody loves acting out doing the problem and then pausing to think about it. So then we get to the act part, make a choice that best, best fits your situation. Not all choices are a good fit for every situation. If And then it goes through the Kelso's choice wheel, which has, what is it, nine or 10, like kind of set strategies that they can try. If someone's pulling your hair on the carpet, it, is it a good fit to take turns with them? Mm -hmm. Well, probably not. And so kind of that decision-making factor mm -hmm. that goes into so then each of these is a strategy from Kelso's choices. Um, and some of like, again, this would be, I would maybe do two strategies per lesson um, for these kids as you're introducing them and giving chance for reviewing. Um, so go to another game, ignore it. And then I've it included some good videos that I've found along the way with these as well. Um, oops, and it's going to play it unless I, okay. Um, talk it out and then giving them sentence stems to use with this as well. I feel upset when you take my toys. I need you to ask to share with me. Um, and again, this is, this would be a whole lesson for, lesson for five, six, seven year olds as they're learning to use this sentence stem, giving them opportunities to practice with it. And, that, and it's funny because I'm looking at those and that's, that could be right out of motivational interviewing too, or nonviolent communications. It's really right. interesting. Yay. Good. Um, make a deal. Tell them to stop. This is another one that I've spent a lot of time practicing with kids. Like if you have, if you're looking at the ground and saying, stop it, stop it, in a joking way. They don't know if you're playing or if you want to be serious. And so mm -hmm. making eye contact, using a firm voice, and telling the person exactly what you want them to stop. Stop touching my hair. I don't like that. Um, walk away. There's a whole cute little song that will get stuck in your head if we listen to this mm -hmm. about walking away. It doesn't matter what people are saying. Um, share and take turns, wait and cool off, apologize, and again, providing them with the sentence stem to say exactly what they're sorry for and what they will try to do next time. Um, and then here's the, again, a part of Kelso's choice is you'll try two strategies before going to an adult. What happens if my strategy doesn't work? Well, I'm going to observe again what's not working, pause and orient to make another choice of a strategy that might work, decide what to do, and then act. Um, and then here's an opportunity to, to practice. There's some pictures of the students. So this would be the slow OODA loops. Like this is low stakes. Kids are working through the, talking through the problem of what these two kids could do that both want to play with the ball. Um, some friends are whispering in front of you, but aren't telling you what they're saying. What can you do to solve this problem? Somebody keeps calling you names. And so this just opens it up for class discussion of very common problems in these lower school classrooms. Somebody's trying to take your spot in line. Um, and then here's, again, just a cute little video about making choices. You guys are welcome to explore these later. And I, we're getting close to the end. That might be it. Okay. Oh, what happens if I try two strategies and it doesn't work? This is when you get to go tell an adult to help um, uh -huh. help you figure out the problem. Mm -hmm. So that's wow. what I have. So it's just like, first, I love your graphics. Did you, um, I don't know, do you have a graphics background or are you just natural with 
No, I think I've just done a lot of visual and I'm seeing now that this one is actually not, these words are not loading correctly on this page. So I'm going to have to go back and fix yeah, that. Well, yeah. It, it, <laughs> it, um, and then the way you broke down, like, you know, this Buddha, um, you know, into, you know, really small steps so a kid can really can understand it and try it out. Uh, built in student voice, built in humor, multi multiple media, um, get, set up some sentence stems and provided some scaffolding for the kids to practice. I, you know, that's this is this is incredibly complete. Yay! Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. I've used Kelso's choices for a few years now, but this is the first time that I've like put it all together. It's been mm -hmm. usually been a bit more scattered. So this was actually really, I was like, I should have done this a long time ago. So this is a really good reason. So thank you, Mitch, for giving me the reason to do this. Yeah. And this will certainly be a tool that I continue to use. So. And Mike, you know, I think that this would be very valuable for other, other teachers, you know, early elementary teachers. If you get a chance to, um, you know, talk in any conferences, um, you should grab it because I think, I think yeah. this could be very usable for, by a cool. lot of people. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm certainly going to share it on our shared school, Google drive, and then please mm -hmm. anybody feel welcome to, to use the link and share the copy of it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, Tammy, you're still here, right? Yeah. I am still here. And? And? You know what? I I didn't have anything to add to what you said. I thought it was thoroughly complete. I did love the graphics. Um, and you know what I love especially is when we talk about conflict and when you use the frogs instead of people, hmm. I think that's extremely powerful because it gives people a chance to think, Okay, these are just fraught. You know what I mean? It just feels like it's okay to yep. excuse me, say what you need to say. So yeah. And I mean, I can't take all the credit for this either because they Kelso's Choices has provided an incredibly well thought out curriculum to um to provide these frogs, right? And so sometimes it even referencing like, well, if you don't know what to do, what do you think Kelso might try in this situation? Uh -huh. Right. Yep. And then it takes some of the pressure off because it's easier to think for somebody else and tell them what to do than it is to figure out for ourselves what we should do sometimes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, really good example. Um, okay, so who wants to who wants to go next? Um, I can go next. Great. Okay. Now you're listed as iPhone. Yes, it's Christy Blackwood. Okay, okay, Christy, thank you. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't have I didn't have my uh, computer, so. Okay, do you um can you share or do you want me to? Um, could you? I can't really do it on my phone. Okay, so let me let me go through and share. Screen. Mine's not as mine's not as fancy as hers. Um, but but I but it's very effective. So that's that's uh, the that's what counts. Okay, so and I made it one hundred fifty percent, so it's probably a little bit easier to read now. Can people right. see this? Okay. Okay, so this is uh, the UDA lesson uh, for high schoolers, or really, probably age like fifteen or sixteen or above. Um, and so I, I'll just kind of read through it. Um, I start off explaining that the OODA loop is a four-step approach to um, uh, to decisions to make that that focuses on filtering available information, putting it in context, and quickly making the most appropriate decision, while also understanding that changes can be made as more data becomes available. Mm -hmm. And then I go into that it's called a loop because it's a reoccurring cycle. And then to explain that it was created by Colonel John Boyd to describe the necessity for fighter pilots to execute the loop faster than the enemy. The idea has also been extended to the strategic arena. Um, and then I could go into like as far as um, the fighter pilot 
scenario, um, whoever completes the loop faster basically wins. And lives. Um, and lives. <laughs> and could even go into saying like, yeah, and lives. <laughs> and also like in video game creation creation and and yep. in um doing like engineering robotics, like um creating um different games and things like that. They use this as a background to um you know create the games to see who wins. Right. And um, even, you know, as you're saying video games, even playing the games because you know, you're yeah. going to do something and you're probably not going to do it right. The You know, you're probably going to die or whatever it is that, that happens the first time. And you have to re go, you know, go through that loop continuously till you get it and go to the next level. Right. Right. Yeah. There's like so many examples and I have a couple here, but there are so many examples you can come up with depending mm -hmm. on the, the group that you're talking to and what their interests are to make them, um, to draw them in and then make it more exciting to to talk about and teach. Um, and then I say that those who use UDA first generally win. Mm -hmm. um, the four steps of UDA are um, observe, orientate, decide, and act. And then the first step, um, observe, you must first see what is happening. The second step is you must position yourself to respond. The third step, decide you must determine a course of action. And the fourth step is act, you must perform that act. And then you use OODA loops nearly every day. So I one example is like on your way to work, you come up on a construction zone. So you're observing that construction zone. And then you know there's several other routes that, that you can get to work. So you're like orientating yourself like, huh, maybe I should go a different way. I'm not sure. And then you decide the best alternative route. So you're deciding. And then you act on that and you go that route. Then once you've made the turn to go that route, the loop begins again. So let's say that turn didn't work and there's construction there too. So your opinion, your... um. Options are now limited, but you still have a few. So it's the observation um, or orientation. Um, and then you pivot to be to the best alternative. So a different route, that's to the side. Yep. And then once again, you act. Great example. So yeah. we do it every, every single day in so many parts of our lives without even realizing it. Mm -hmm. um, and then kind of like go into the next day, because you've already, you know, like you failed the first time and then you won the second time, like you kind of know the way to go that worked for you previously. So maybe get to work on time mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, then, then another example in real life as follows. So I recently went to my daughter's house to have dinner with her family, um, with um, her husband and my my granddaughter. So we put steaks on the grill and then went inside to have drinks and conversation. And then my son-in-law had put the burner on high to get to the temperature, you know, to heat it up faster. So we were distracted <laughs> by both um, having the drinks and then a little conversation. And then until my son-in-law observed smoke coming from the grill. So we rushed outside and quickly orientated ourselves to the situation, noting the flare up and that the grill was safe, but, um, but like from the wall, but, and there wasn't any flammable material, like there wasn't a fire or anything, but um, we, I, I made a quick decision and acted to turn off the burner. <laughs> so we observed that the flare up continued being orientated that the fire was the accumulating was accumulating grease in the grease trap. So my son-in-law suggested we save the steak. So I decided that he was correct and acted to grab the steak with tongs and place it in a nearby plate. So then we observed the fire was still burning. So we noted or oriented an orientation that the danger was over, but we needed to put the fire out. So my daughter suggested putting the fire out with water and my son-in-law 
kind of panicked and screamed no. Mm. So we decided we decided to agree with him and look for other solutions. And then I suggested baking soda, and we decided to try that. I acted to grab the baking soda, and then my daughter, I put she, but my daughter put it on the on the fire. And so the fire went out. So we you note that we observed the situation. We maintained control and did not panic. Well, most of us. My daughter was like <laughs> totally frozen. And it's like she didn't even know where the baking soda was. She's like, what? She didn't know what's going on. Um, we analyzed the situation. We orientated the situation to discuss alternatives. We took the proper action and note that the leader, me, uh, took the action after consulting the rest of the team. So wow. um, it's funny, uh, like, how this situation happened and how you, you know, act in a bit of a frenzied, maybe emergency type situation. Mm -hmm. um, and that just like, I'm sure that many of us could put our, think of any situation that there was some action going on and some decision-making going on and, and, and just put in the different, Uda words throughout the scenario and realize like how often we, we, we do this and hope that we are the winners at the end. Yep. And, you know, cause this could have gone a lot, you know, we could have ended up being the losers and burnt the house down. Yeah. So thank goodness that didn't happen. Or, lo or so. losing the steak, which is worse, right? Oh, I know. We were trying <laughs> to save that steak. And, um, so then I would just talk to maybe have some, if you know, if I had time, talk to have some people give me some examples that they can think of in their lives um, that where this comes into play. And I think by putting, you know, con connecting it with real life situations mm -hmm. um, that it makes it make a lot of sense. And um, so people can, you know, put it to use. Yep. No, it's, um, you know, like really clear explanation of the four steps, you know, and then using real life examples that the kids can relate to um, and humor. I love that, you know, the steak example was, is, <laughs> you know, um, uh, and both examples required multiple loops. So that was, you know, it, those were really good examples of, of, of that. It's an iterative process. And then the discussion after where the kids um, are going to talk about the things that they themselves are interested in and kind of the the teacher, you or whoever uses this, um, uh, this lesson, uh, the teacher then guiding the discussion to, OK, so so how do we, you know, in this situation, you know, what are we going to O, O, o and then D and A and what if it goes wrong and we have to do something else? So so really reinforcing the concepts of the four steps and 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 that it's a loop i it really yeah really high school appropriate really yeah very good yeah i like i really like it thank you and i see thank you I'm, I'm gonna uh i'll stop share and i see that there's um let's see i think there's a there is there another message from somebody or oh okay um no um so um yeah, re I I really really good. Thank you, Mitch. If you can share, this is Colleen. I okay. don't have my computer, but I have my phone, so I can talk you through mine. Okay, that'd be great. That's great. Okay. Any other any, any other comments from people about Christie's? Anybody want to say anything? Because I I thought this was really good outline that that's that one could use. All high schoolers will love a story that has a fire in it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, so let me find uh, Valerie's. Yeah, I could definitely relate to that one, except for I'm glad to hear there wasn't anything flammable near the house because my husband and I were barbecuing. He was the grill master, of course, at my son's house, and they have vinyl siding, and the barbecue was too close to the vinyl siding, so we ended up Ooh. in 
her new vinyl siding. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad to hear it wasn't too close. So I think, I think, uh, Colleen, I have yours. And let me just see. It's kind of middle of the spreadsheet. This is it, right? Did I get the right no, one? No, but I'm a couple down from there. Mine's uh, using OODA Oops. loops support. Okay. <laughs> nope, that, one, I... that one is fine. That's Valerie's. Okay, I'm, I'm so sorry. No uh, worries. All good. Okay. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, sorry. Uh, here we go. Now let me try this again. Uh, of course, now I have to go back to the first. Somehow they ended on the last slide, but using OODA loops in sports, right? Yep, there we go. Okay, okay. let me do the slideshow so it's a little easier to read. Okay, here we go. All right. So, Where do you find uh, that road sign? That's pretty cool. I, you know, I just did OODA loop. Um, images and I scrolled through and it was kind of like I don't know it was down a ways and I went that's kind of a pretty good way to start it off so uh -huh. I just randomly grabbed stuff that's what we do as teachers right yep yep pirate when we can on free images so <laughs> that's that's how I found it I thought it was kind of neat um so I'm um, just a little bit of backstory so I teach middle school life skills students um, a lot of my students are nonverbal uh, with autism and their academic uh, performance level is typically between a kindergarten and second grade level. So I really struggled to try to figure out how I was going to implement OODA loops into my regular instruction. And I grappled over a number of different ideas and I just didn't feel confident so I went a different route and um, over the course of a number of years, I've been a coach um, I've been in an athletic director capacity. So I decided to look at this through the lens of a staff development opportunity. So um, through the lens of being like a recreational director or an athletic director and just working with um, coaches uh, to utilize OODA loops in sport. So mm -hmm. if you want to go ahead and click past the next one. So um, I um, have learning objectives. So this would be just like a little staff development training with them, uh, explaining the origin and meaning, being able to apply it, connect it to decision-making in sports. Um, so next slide is just basically what is the OODA loop, talks about the four um, different components and then there's a decision making process being able to filter information it's applicable on an individual level as well as organizational and being able to react so just basically a little back story and then if you go to the next slide um then this is a short video that's embedded so um so i'm just going to just uh, click on it so you can oh uh, i don't think but i guess it's there's a and i'm not probably not sharing sound because i probably forgot to do that oh that's okay so each oh. each of these slides uh will have a short little video if it mm -hmm. has um blue it's a you know basically a hot link okay um, and, so that, if you want to... and that particular oh. video i guess is on fighter pilots right it is. And then it's actually um, a gentleman who really, really, it's a different video than what we watch. Mm -hmm. And he really, really breaks it down into very succinct steps. Mm -hmm. And so I just liked how it was laid out. So I grabbed it. Yeah. And they're going to love the fighting, the the, air, the <laughs> aircraft fighting, right? Yeah. I'm open. So. Um, so then it was just posing a question, you know, how can the, loop, the OODA loops be beneficial in a recreational setting, which is what our, um, whether we have intramurals or whether we have our um, inter-squad um, athletics. So just graphics and next slide is just a very simplistic OODA loop uh, talk that I found also. And so one of the things that I did is I embedded different um, graphics in different so it's the loop but in different perspectives mm -hmm. um, to try to draw from different people's um, senses 
So this was just a black and white version. Um, talks about how the outside world impacts the cycle and there's that interior as well as exterior circle and how that guidance and control is impacted. So if you go to the next one, um, this is an example that I found that I really liked. I like Chick-fil-A mm. and I don't have Chick-fil-A where I live. So <laughs> this is mm. kind of a funny one. Um, so it's Saturday morning around 10 a.m. You're hungry. So you're thinking, man, you know, I'm starving. And you remember there's Chick-fil-A. It's like, oh, yeah, I met my daughters in Indiana. They have Chick-fil-A down the street. They're still serving breakfast. Yay. I decide I'm going to go. And then I act by actually <laughs> consuming my chicken biscuit or maybe two, you know, because I'm there. Um, so the application to sport isn't necessarily the same as that. But just to kind of give them a lighthearted sense to go dive into it is kind of what I wanted to lay out. So if you go to the yeah. next one, um, so who can use OODA loops? So I wanted them to realize that it's, you know, it's kind of a systemic situation where they can utilize OODA loops um, in their individual roles, but also that we can apply it um, with our athletes that so they can utilize it themselves um, in practice as well as in competition. So go to the next one. And so again, just a different graphic um, <clears throat> of the loop itself. This one, um, I am a chunk and chewer. And so I like to have repeated information for myself, not just a single shot. And so for me, I built this kind of building upon my learning style. And so this kind of breaks it down again. And then it just adds a few little bullet points for each of the four different processes. Hmm. Um, I'm not gonna read it to everybody because I know that we're all intelligent individuals and we can read, hmm. um, but that's one of the reasons why I chose that particular graphic. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then moving on, um, telling them that you they can use an OODA loop um, to elevate situations in a leadership role in athletics. It can be applied to anything to help processes move, run smoother and more efficiently. Um, we know from class as well as, you know, we may have other background that the loop is utilized in business situations for efficiency. And so we can utilize it in our organization as well. Um, so this one, um, how can directors use those OODA loops? Um, they make multiple decisions every day. Uh, the factors we know can impact the decision-making and making some of those decisions can carry a lot of stress. So hopefully this helps us make good decisions. So if we go to the next one, just some sample types of situations that a, a director might face. It could be a coach is missing for a particular contest. It might be you have the wrong amount of equipment or broken equipment or a facility that you signed up to use is not able to be utilized. In their small groups, discuss other problems that a director might encounter. So I uh, just an opportunity to do a little turn and talk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next one, again, another graphic, just to keep that imprint in my mind of what that loop looks like and what those four steps are. And so then I gave them a scenario to imagine that they are an AD and choose the situation that they might face and apply the steps of the loop in their group. So just bringing it to the forefront and the application part of it. And so then I provided them on the, the next slide again, another OODA loop that um, has some questions to kind of prompt them as they are defining that problem that they have and then working through. Um, I thought it was a nice little piece to provide that scaffolded support for some mm -hmm. people. It's like, well, what does that look like? Well, here's a few questions that might give you some little prompting. So I liked that and included that. Okay, so from there, I um, really wanted to emphasize how critical that that feedback is um, to the process at every stage. So that just continual feedback. And I chose the chalkboard feedback because that's akin to sports and the chalk talk. Mm, yep. So I just kind of played on that a little bit. And then down at the bottom that that feedback should be immediate, it, continuous, and then cyclical. And so just some graphics there, just, just kind of imprint that. 
Then I took it to the next level that, well, not only can we use it for preparation um, for our contests or for our athletes or for our coaches or for our program, but it can also be vital actually in the moment during our sporting events. And we know that coaches and athletes alike are going to be faced with some critical situations in the moment that they need to address. And so OODA Loops gives them the opportunity to hopefully have an advantage. So going to the next one. So then as a coach, how can I use them? Well, we know that coaches go to great lengths because they want their coach, their teams to be victorious. So an example of that is they're observing. Now oh, we're going to watch a film of an, our opponent. Oh, we're oriented, or gathering our thoughts. What do we think? You know, getting some ideas, deciding, developing that game plan. What are we going to do for offense or defense? Or if it's an individual sport, it might be look a little bit different. Um, and then acting, applying by sharing with the team, you know, whether that's a quote unquote chalk talk or independently leading through them through a new drill or whatever to address um, the game plan. So then I went to um, some examples of sports specific application for OODA mm. loops based upon a number of common um sports that might be seen i didn't get everything included so if anybody is passionate about a particular sport i apologize because i didn't get them all in there mm -hmm. uh, but volleyball um each of those anything that's a blue is a hot link to a video mm -hmm. that has supports that um, gives them some more insight about how to um, apply OODA loops to their specific sport so I thought that was kind of fun. I, yeah. Oh, and yep. Okay. And then we go to football. Uh, one of the things that I really liked about the football one is the article or the video that talks about how Chip Kelly utilized OODA loops um, in his coaching. Hmm. So if you're an NFL fan, this one was pretty cool to kind of read through. Um, continuing on, there's one for soccer. Uh, a couple for basketball, both at the local level and then also the professional basketball one for the NBA. This one goes a lot deeper into um, looking at statistics and um, how those play to, you know, who's going to take the shot on any given, you know, play set. So I thought that was kind of a neat one to include. Uh, hockey is the next one and how critical um, those split second decisions are in hockey. Uh, baseball and softball, very similar, yet a little bit different, but um, also situational thinking based on play, um, where your runners are, hitting situations, all of those different types of things. And then I took that, just kind of setting that out to give them some resources before they break out into their coaching staff groups. Hmm. And so using the information that they've learned, um, have them talk about how they can incorporate that into their particular coaching. And then using that as a springboard, then how can they introduce OODA loops for decision-making to their athletes? And then giving them some time to work, giving them an opportunity to share out, and then ultimately, following up with our teaching cycle. Did we meet our objectives? Check, check, check. Um, there's a few additional resources at the end, which were didn't quite fit into any particular sport. So I just wanted to include those just for some extras. Mm. And then again, me and my learning style, I put in a couple of additional resources at the very end, which are a couple different yep. graphics of OODA loops. Mm -hmm. And so just depending upon what different styles that people like, they can be very simplistic to very complex. And then obviously leaving some time at the end for Q&A. And this is a very simple, simplified diagram also, right? That was a joke. Yes. <laughs> no, this is, uh, <laughs> uh, this was, this is actually John Boyd, this was, probably one of the last essays that he wrote um the discourse on winning and losing and it was very, you know anyhow very complex but 
um, kind of pulled together a lot of the different things that uh, that he advocated. And so, so do, do you do you work with coaches and athletic I directors? Do. So I, do. I I just have to think that this is this is something that's going to really add to their toolbox. You know that, um, you know, because I don't I don't think most coaches think in terms of that they're necessarily familiar with UDA unless they're in, unless they're coming from the armed forces or or a police force. Um, and this actually gets them to start thinking about, um, you know, iterating, preparing for the next thing, um, a- applying it to different sports. The the way you use the different graphics of UDA, so each one was different, um, so, which meant that it was a little bit new, and so people could it allows people to generalize generalize better. And in addition, in each in in the different graphics, you had different bullet points or different questions, so that added different perspectives to how they were thinking about about UDA. And then having people break out into the groups and you know consider either different sports or different applications of you know how they would use it. I think um, that kind of cements all the different things that 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 you went over. So um, really complete. Um, uh, Thank you. I don't think yeah. it's fully complete. There's still tweaking out. There's things I want to add in there. Of course. But right. I, I appreciate the feedback on that. It was, no, it gave me a deeper understanding for sure. Uh-huh. Well, that's one of the things, you know, the, the best, one of the best ways to learn is to teach, right? Um, Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I, when when you use this with with coaches, I'd I'd love to hear what how it turned out because my guess is, um, I wouldn't be surprised if you got a standing standing ovation when you when you use this. I think it's unique. Wow, that's that's pretty lofty, but I appreciate that. <laughs> no, I could see it. It's like people, you know, nobody thinks this way except for John Boyd, you know, um, without being trained in it. And this, it's like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I could just see light bulbs going off as people, as, you know, athletic directors and coaches and um, trainers, you know, start seeing the applications of this. It's very good. Thank you. Any other comments? So um yeah okay so good so so um so who wants to go next Aha I can go Oh great okay thank you Kim and can Do you want to try sharing or? I will try. Let's see. Um, No, you can do it. Okay. (laughs) I have it up, but. Let me, let me, uh, all right. Um, What I want to do is, oh, Zoom, okay. Um, I want to get to 150% so I can, so people can see it. And so here, there we go. Okay. Okay. So mine is based off a book called what should Darla do? Um, I teach homeschool to my daughter. So we're familiar with this book and it's basically Darla's faced with different choices and one choice, um, one choice is a, however she chooses, dictates the rest of her day. One's a positive choice and she ends up having a good day. One's a negative choice and she ends up having a harder day. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the lesson plan, I gave a link to the YouTube video if you don't have the book. Um, and I, I would talk with my daughter about, um, you know, in the book, Darla faces different problems. So her first problem is, um, um, 
just before I sit down, my sister Hannah sits right next to him. Hey, I wanted to sit next to Benji. I say, too bad, Hannah replies, I got here first. So yeah. her sister sits in her spot. And then there's two choices for um, the student to choose from of what should Darla do. So I'm saying, um, we know that Darla has two ways to solve the problem, but today when we read it, we're gonna help Darla learn how to use these choices to solve these problems and then to solve even bigger problems that come up. And so then I'd briefly explain um, different kind of problems, simple, you know, I would go through the different types of problems and talk, mm -hmm. and I talk through an example with my daughter, um, have her come up with some, what she thinks. Then we would read to this page and we'd stop here. Mm -hmm. And then I would say, we're going to break down and talk through Darla's problem. What is the problem? Is this a problem that only has one correct solution or are there lots of ways to solve it? Um, is this a problem where she has to have help? Is it a problem of safety? And then I would describe what UDA is. We're going to use something called UDA to help Darla solve her problem. This will help Darla solve her minor problems like in the book. Um, and we're going to talk through and process it to help you solve your own problems. So then the first thing we, I would ask her is, we're going to stop and we're going to observe this situation. Um, what is happening and what does Darla want? So then we talk through, you know, Darla wants to sit next to her little brother. Um, so from the book, Darla has two choices before solving this problem. Um, well, not from the book, but like what I'd be talking, she can react or she can respond. And then we would talk about reacting and responding. You know, reacting is done without thinking, usually doesn't go that well, but responding is when we take a second and think to respond. And then we would talk through with her, when are times you've reacted and when times you've responded and how did those work out for you? And then I'd keep talking. We want to train our brains to respond instead of react. And we're gonna practice with Darla's problem. Um, from the book choices, which I would ask, which did the, she think was reacting, which was responding. Um, and the two choices they have in the book or she could sit in a different chair or she could try to force Hannah off the chair. Uh, so let, so it's besides these, um, let's help Darla make the right choice and let's come up with three other solutions for her problems and then we'd write them down. And then for each of the solutions that my daughter and I came up with, we would make up the next part of the story, good or bad. And then we would talk about how it worked, how it worked out for her. And then step two, um, we are going to talk about what Darla already knows about this problem or situation. Um, do you think she's been in this situation before? Um, what does she know about her sister and how might her sister respond? What might her mom say? What has worked or not worked for her in the past? What are some of the rules of her house? Has she tried any solutions before and what has and hasn't worked? And then we write down things that Darla might already know could happen um, from her past experiences. And then the last step would be, let's pick our best choice and pretend that Darla uses that solution. Um, and then we would tell our own story. Hmm. And then I'd go back and re tell her again, this is the process of solving problems called UDA. And the more we practice this, the better and faster we make it, be at making decisions and solving problems. And then we make it like a little challenge. We're gonna be on the lookout for problems that we're facing today. Um, big or little, and when one of us comes to a problem, let's come together and use this to practice. Wow. So, so it's, you know, just seeing how you've taken these concepts, which are made for, you know, sophisticated adults, you know, the, the whole Kinevin framework and OODA loops, and you've brought them down to something that a second, third grader can understand is pretty amazing, right? Yeah. Um, it, it's you know that that's great and then you know just from as i'm listening you know to your the your explanation you know 
you know, what what one of the things that popped into my mind was, was you know, the Bloom's seven levels, right? And you're getting kids, or in this case, your daughter, but it could be done with with other kids. You know, you're getting her to create, right? Because she's creating her own possible other solutions and creating her own stories. And when you're doing that, that's kind of that's the highest form of learning. Mm -hmm. So the way you're you're building in, you know, the you know pedagogies that really uh, allow for deep learning and you know high motivation into this lesson I thought I think is is really incredible I yeah. I would imagine that this could be used throughout elementary school you know, it, you yeah. know second third fourth yeah. um graders um you know and, you know and I, and I hesitate to say k and one because it you know to go through all of this is probably an hour maybe even longer yeah. and you know so so t for younger kids we'd ha probably have to break it into like three or four lessons which, yeah. which probably could be done but for, you know a, a second or a one-on-one -on -one with a second grader or, or a third grader or in a group um you know with third fourth fifth graders i think that i think this has universal applicability yeah yeah it, we use this book all the time in house so it's fun to get another aspect of mm -hmm. it a teach way to use it yeah um are you going to go back into teaching others or are you going to mostly co focus on your daughter no i or... am yeah yeah my my baby is going to be in kindergarten next year so i'll uh -huh. probably be back when she goes to kindergarten um okay yeah because because you know um i hope this gets used by other teachers and i hope you get a chance to use it with with, mm -hmm. a, with a lot of other kids or i don't know if there's a homeschool group that you belong to but my guess is that the other parents in the in a homeschool group could really yeah. use something like this also yeah mm -hmm. it. um I, it's really good thank you thank you thank for you. sharing and thank mm -hmm. you for putting it together um yeah other other comments tammy any what? um so Okay, so Ben, who wants to go next? I'll go next. Great, thank you, Nicole. Um, do you want to? Uh, do you want to share or you share your screen, or do you want me uh, to? Yeah, let me try to here. It looks good. Okay. Okay. And maybe just go to the slideshow or perfect. There we go. How's that? Yep. Am I on the first slide? It says, Ooh, what does it mean? O O D A. Or, you know, yes. Ah, there's a there's the first one. Okay. So um I am with a high school and um I brought up that I was doing this, these classes and all this, and um, the teachers that work here have never heard of OODA loops either. So I figured this could be either used for our students or for the teachers just to kind of introduce OODA loops and get them familiar with what they are. Um, so this is OODA loops for beginners coming up with the solution to problems. I just laid out here what the UDA stands for the observe, orient, decide, and act. And then on these next few slides, I just kind of did a more like a, a definition for each one um, for observe, observe the situation to gain the knowledge that you need to make a decision. Um, orient yourself to make sense of the situation, evaluate and analyze what is happening, and also come with any come up with any alternative outcomes and ideas of what the outcome may be so that you can um, be ready to change course if you need to. Um, and then decide what actions are you going to take. Uh, you can have more than one option in your arsenal for, you know, 
if something goes wrong or something goes a little different than you thought, you can have more than one option. And also keep in mind what may happen next, because you never know once you decide something, even before you start to act, there may be a change that happens and you might have to change course. And then finally, act. And this is your experiment. Um, you're going to carry out your plan, but you still need to continue to observe and orient the situation and make any changes that are necessary to have the best outcome that you would like to see. Um, I picked this graphic here. It kind of explains it a little bit. Um with the different little pictures. I liked that too. Yeah. And then um, just added a little bit about John Boyd. He was a military strategist with the U.S. Air Force, and he used the idea for the combat operations process during military campaigns. And that was kind of his first little simple um, graphic, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. And then I also added in this more complex graphic. And I really like this one because it shows that you can go back at any stage. Um, you can go all the way back to observing, um, make sure that you're getting that feedback, uh, your guidance and control, and knowing that there's different circumstances that could unfold at any moment. So that's all I have. That's a great introduction. And um and and I like the way, especially you know, when you when you were talking about act, you related it to experiment, you know, so that people understand that um when they're acting, it's not that they're looking to succeed or fail at that point, but they're looking to act and it's and it's merely an experiment because you want to take the results and adjust what you're doing, kind of like the design process um that you that we teach in science the uh, design process engineering right so, and not to make sure that they don't get um discouraged because it's probably not going to work the first time so yeah yeah um i think it's, it's a uh, and as you said this this is at the level that can be used uh for high school kids um and also can be used for pd and can then um trigger a lot of conversations where people talk about specific examples where they might use it. And, um, you know, you as the, as the leader can kind of walk them through how they would, they would apply it, um, to their own situations. Really, um, really great introduction to, uh, the UDA process. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, okay. So we have time for at least one more presentation. Um, and who's willing to who's willing to wrap this up? I can go. Okay. Good. Would you be willing to do the video for me? Okay. Um, let me get it on my screen. Okay, and here we go. Let me... Oh, and I should present. Here, here we, go. we go. Okay. So um, this came from, I'm not currently in a classroom, but um, I did get to spend some time with my granddaughter recently. And she, like a lot of the students I work with, um, think that they can just get an idea. I'm going to go do this and I'm going to be awesome at it. And there's no practicing or building or so that's, that's where it came from. Um, but wait a minute, I, I thought kids, kids just do things impulsively. I know they're just naturally <laughs> gifted with all these skills, right? Wow. Yeah. So here <laughs> we are. Um, so I figured I would just do a hands-on lesson and kind of talk them through the process first and then do the explanation after because unfortunately, that's how my mind works. So and a lot of kids too, right? <laughs> very much. Okay, so um, we're starting out with we're going to take a trip. So you want to be here. You are here, but this is where you want to be. So we have to do some planning ahead of time. So we're going to the next. Um, so for example, let's take a camping trip. 
You got to think of what you were, what you'll need before you go. Um, and then you're more likely to have a fun mm -hmm. and successful trip. So I put some pictures up there to kind of clue the kids in on things that they might need because not all kids have been camping before. Mm -hmm. Um, but just, just to look at it, they can see the fire and know, oh, we need some more stuff. We need firewood. We need a fire starter. Oh, there's a tent. Yeah. We should probably pack sleeping gear. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to kind of give them, give them the ideas of what they might need. Um, and then as a group, we can go through and we can make a list. Like I know I'm going to need gas in the vehicle. It's something a kid might not think about. I know I'm going to have to pack a tent and sleeping bag. And then we could just kind of guide them through other things that they might want to do before the trip. Um, look at a map, check the weather, uh, make a reservation at a campground, or um, look at areas that, like in our case, were on fire last year, so we couldn't mm -hmm. go, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, right. So just, just to kind of think through just a checklist. These are some things we're going to need to do before we go. Okay, next. And then now what? We're going to... We've got our list, so now we're going to carry out the list. We're going to set a date to go. We're going to set a date to come back. We're going to check out our route, our weather, make our reservations. We're going to pack what we need, and we're going to go ahead and take our trip. Good. Uh, looking, I'm, I lost my my cursor. There it goes. <laughs> there you huh. go. So now we're going to carry out the plan. Have fun. I'll see you when you get back. But it doesn't stop there. And that's the whole point of UDA that I think the kids need to realize is that this is a cyclical thing. We did it, but we can do it again. We can make it better. What happened on our trip? Well, we had a great trip. We had a lot of fun, but there were mosquitoes and there was rain. We didn't think about those things before we went. So now we're going to need to plan for the next time. So next time, what are we going to do different? So now let's plan another trip. What worked last time? What did not work? Um, reading John Boyd's work, a lot of it was trying to get in the head of the opponent. What is the opponent going to do and how can I counteract that? Mm -hmm. And I think that's integral to our own life. We need to not only think about what we can do to succeed, but what can get in our way. What are the stumbling blocks? So your last trip was not a failure. You did have fun. Not everything went the way you wanted it to. So it was an opportunity to learn. So now you know more about planning a trip and what does and does not work. So we're ready to plan another trip and we can make improvements on this one. Um, then at this point, I wanted to break down what the actual ideas were behind um, the UDA principles. So we're gonna look at our situation. I wanna go camping, I need a vacation. I'm gonna make a decision. Um, where am I going to go? What do I need to pack? Act on that decision. We're going to go. Um, then we're going to observe. We're going to reflect afterwards. How did it go? What worked? What didn't? What can I change? Um, and then we start all over again. Now we've got the situation. We want to go again. We still need, we need another vacation. What's the list? What's the plan? Um, and just show how this can, um, how the loop works, how it's a reflection, acting, decision making and it keeps going around and around um so now we're gonna try it with another idea in this case um we want to play a sport let's say basketball um you've not played on a team sport before but you want to do well so what skills do you already have and then what skills do you need to learn or improve upon and then um the next couple slides are just working through that process um not just say, I'm going to exercise. Well, what exercises? How often? What are you going to do? How often are you going to do them? Um, and then how often are you going to check in on yourself to see if it's working? How do you know it's working? Um, when I spoke with my granddaughter, we talked about specifics. You know, she says, well, I'll wait a year. In a year, I'll look back and see if it worked. And it's like, honey, do you really want to do this every day for a year before you find out it's not yeah. working? And she went, well, no. And I said, okay, then then let's make it a little shorter time. So um, just trying to get her to think about it realistically. Um, when, when would you know if your things are working? Can you do it in a day? Does it take a week? Does it take a month? And just to try to really get her to think, to think through a process 
not just throw an answer out and hope it's the right answer. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, what strides have you made? What's your next step? So um, the last page is just for informational purposes about where it came from. But um, I was always interested in Thomas Edison. And one of his quotes, someone said, you failed 10,000 times. He goes, no, I haven't failed 10,000 times. I've succeeded in proving that those 10,000 ways won't work. Mm -hmm. So got to go find something else. And realizing that when you're working toward a goal, not meeting that goal right away is not a failure. It's a process. It's it's a step in a process. Yeah. I, so so one of the things that you 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 did in the lesson, which is, um, you know, I I think this is so important. It's it's a great pedagogical tool, is to have people do. You know, first of all, see a need to do something. Okay. So the need was get across the state. Okay. And then they do something without necessarily knowing the, you know, all the concepts behind it, but they mm -hmm. can kind of see what you get, a, they get a practice doing something. And then you can, you have their actions that you can pin the concepts to. So the actions they went through to plan that trip. You can then relate to the concepts of 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 Uda, which 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 you did, which was which, which I thought was great. Um, and then once they understand the concepts and they've done it once, then expand it to something else. When you expanded it to a sport that somebody might want to do, but you know, and it could have been you know, depending on who you're talking to, uh, one you know, with your granddaughter, it could have, it could be basketball, but with another group of students, it could be it, it could be some other skill, right? Right. Uh, and um you know and then the fact that um that it's that it's a loop that the first thing that you do probably you know that's going to give you some feedback and you you should you should continue it and then i love the thomas edison quote um i just you know when i was looking at that quote i was thinking i was at a conference uh a few years ago and uh there was a uh the a woman who was the, what we call them we would call a superintendent um there's another title that they use in finland um and she was talking about the initiatives that she took in in her school system um to get the kids really interested in learning and preparing for life after uh, you know after after school and everything and it's a u.s conference and so she talks about the things that she did and the question from the first question that came up from a u.s superintendent was you know, you've been talking about the things that you did that you succeeded. Can you tell us about the things that you did that failed? And her face went completely white. She knew she had no idea what to say. And she just was quiet for about 30 seconds. And then she says, um, no, I'm sorry. You know, I, we don't, you know, that that's a, that's a different question than the way we operate. She says, we don't do things to succeed or fail we do things to learn and then we learn from them and then we try something else. And she says, every single thing that we did, we learned from, and then we could adjust. So I don't think that there was anything that we did that was fail. It, the, the idea of doing something and then having it fail and then giving up on it was just not something that was, you know, it, it was completely beyond her thought process. And the idea of, doing something merely to learn so that you can adjust was completely beyond the thought process of the superintendent because from the superintendent standpoint you do something and it succeeds and if it doesn't succeed you fail and you find somebody you know some something to blame for the fact that it failed and you and you move on um it was just very interesting the differences between the two uh the two superintendents very cool yeah so uh really good example of explaining you know, Uda, um, you know, to, uh, you know, uh, going through the steps and, you know, getting somebody to do something first that, they, that they're, that they would be interested in and then attaching the concepts to it. I, I, I think that's a great way of teaching. Thank you. So, so thank you. Um, and so I think what, you know, we're, we're pretty much, um, you know, technically it's, it's only, um, just that, just after quarter after, but, um, is, is there anybody who would, who would like to go or. 
Um, or then it's a good time to then um, maybe uh, stop and, and reflect. And, um, you know, I just want to, you know, <clears throat> thank all of you for, for attending. And, um, and I hope that this, <clears throat> that, you know, during this course that you've gotten a number of techniques to be able to work with others and to get others to understand um, problems very rarely just have one answer. Um, and sometimes problems don't have any answers. And that if that for any non-trivial problem, we have to be prepared that the first thing that we do isn't necessarily going to completely solve the problem. So we have to be prepared to iterate. Um, and that there's two basic iteration cycles. One is where we have time to really think about it, which is um, what, what I called in the course, slow UDA. And the other is that we're in the middle of the situation, um, you know, we have to be able to react fast. And in order to react fast, we have to have a lot of skills that we are fluent in that we can rely on really quickly. And so you, you determine what those skills are in that slow UDA process, and then you practice them in different formats. And you saw the example of in basketball of somebody practicing them, um, uh, you know, despite distractions, despite people getting in their way, so that when they got in the real situation, they could use them without thinking and without being distracted and react faster than 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 their opponents. And um, hopefully you all will be able to use that in your personal lives, in your professional lives, and with the and with with kids, and also help other people through that process. So that's that that's what my goal is in, in teaching the course. And um uh, with, uh, you know, Tammy's, well, I'll be doing it, but Tammy's offering the, uh, mind shifting one class in, in June. So, um, if you know people who might be interested in the class, you know, to, you know, let them know about the class, or if you just taken mind shifting two and haven't taken mind shifting one, and you're interested in taking the class, uh, you can, you can enroll through PD enroller as well. Um, if you try some of these things and they either work or they don't work, um, I'd love to hear about it. And if you, if any of you ever feel the need to like brainstorm or want to try something out, you have my email and, and, um, I think on my email is also my cell phone and, you know, feel free to reach out and, um, I'm happy to brainstorm or help in any way I can. So, um, so, so thank you. We're going to leave the course open for a, for a couple of weeks. So some people haven't had a chance to view all the videos or respond to the, the, the reflection surveys um, or get your lesson plans in. So, uh, so you have at least a week and a half, probably two weeks in order to get those in. I will um, send out emails tomorrow to people where I don't have them having completed everything so that you know, uh, I, my records could be wrong and you can correct me or you can, um, you know, or you, you can actually watch the videos or, or do the reflections and, and get credit for them. Um, so, uh, Tammy, is there anything that you'd like to say to close off the course? I, I know that, um, the, the actual PD, the C, the continuing education hours or credit hours are awarded by ESD and uh, you won't get those for probably three weeks because if we close the course in two weeks, then Tammy has to notify the people that the course is done and then it takes them about a week or so to enter it into the system and, and, and award the, 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 the credit hours. Mitch, can yep. I say something real quickly? Sure. Um, all this, uh, the, all of this reminded me of uh, something I read from um, Re Rebecca Z. Schaefer. Um, I don't know if you've ever read the book, The Zen of Listening. No, but, but, but that... I'm a guy, so I don't listen. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the um, Zen but... of Listening? I'm going to, okay. Yeah, The I'll Zen of up. Listening, um, Rebecca Z. Schaefer and um and she wrote, uh, thinking about ourselves, analyzing our actions, and planning our behavior have helped us achieve personal success. Hmm. So that's pretty much, you know, what we're doing. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's going on my list. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm Her reading, uh, right now, I'm reading a book called, oh, The Zen of Listening. 
Okay. Zen of listening. Yes. Yep. I'm reading a book now called Self Reg, mm -hmm. um, which is about self regulation and it's focused on self and instilling self regulation in kids. But all the, you know, so it's valuable from that standpoint. But all the things that he's bringing up are all about self regulation and they're the things that are in Mind Shifting One and Mind Shifting Three. It, 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 I thought that was a great book too. So right. the Zen of listening, that's going to go on my, my, my list next. Thank you. Thank you, Lorian. And I see Heidi had a question about ESD sending a bill to pay for the clock hours. Um, so I'm going to say yes. Uh, but some of you, you know, those of you who've taken the courses before, how did you get billed? Because I'm here in New York. I don't, um, anybody have an answer at how you got billed last time? So if not, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that ESD is going to send a bill. It's going to be like, it's going to be like $3 a credit. So if you completed everything in the course, it's 15 credits. So it'll be $45. I'm not sure they send you a bill. I think it's your mm -hmm. own responsibility to go into your account and pay ah. whenever you can. That's yeah. yeah. It's on the enroller. Yeah. You go into PD enroller and you have to fill out a survey. And then at that point you, um, you pay online for your credits. Yeah. And you can take however long, like a year later, you can pay for it. I mean, I don't think it's, it's on your responsibility. Thank you. And if I remember correctly, you can't pay until after the course is closed and it's been marked that you completed the course, then you do the survey and then you pay for your clock hours. If I'm remembering right from last year. Do you year. get an email from yes. them saying it's closed or not? Or you get a notification at all? Don't th I don't think so. I think we just monitor it ourselves. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. Well, thank you guys. This was really okay. helpful. I haven't had to pay for clock hours yet, so it's helpful. Okay, and that should be in, in about three weeks. Okay. All right. So I'm going to turn off the recording. I'll stay on if anybody has any questions.